All right, there's a few news articles I thought were interesting. Uh, looks like the volume's okay. All right. So uh, the Washington Post says something I've been sort of anticipating, that the hype of AI is perhaps deflating. And now we're going to have to stop all the nonsense and get down to the hard part, which is, of course, making it financially feasible and practical, as opposed to just having scary prognostications that the end of the world is coming and such. And everybody just throwing money at everything AI, even though none of it's actually very practical or useful yet. And as, um, as they've been doing for a while, I think the one product that really looks useful is Microsoft Copilot. I've been involved in uh, consulting for companies that are trying to get Microsoft Copilot going and deciding how risky it is. And they really do seem to have put a lot of thought into Copilot and made it into a good productive product. But I think even Microsoft doesn't yet um, admit that they're making money. Copilot costs 20 or 30 bucks a month. And even at that price, it's probably costing them more to run it than it is to, uh, than they're getting in payment for it. So, uh, like they say, I think this uh, AI has had a huge amount of hype, and now it's about peaking, and now there's going to be like disillusionment and uh, the struggle of actually, you know, taking the new idea and boiling it down to a useful product. So this was pretty interesting. I saw people getting, getting excited about this on Mastodon. Um, so Chase Bank, I'm actually a Chase Bank customer. I think my Amazon credit card is through Chase. Anyway, um, they are now going to target customers, but it's not that exactly they're going to sell your data, apparently two data brokers that will just resell it to everybody in the world. What they're going to do is put targeted ads on the Chase website and in the Chase app and such. And those will be based on your spending habits. So uh, I'm not quite sure what to think about that. It is a new privacy intrusion that your bank is looking at what you're spending money on and letting people target ads on that. But um, I don't know, for people like me, where I probably buy most of my stuff at Amazon anyway, <laughs> Amazon's already knowing everything about what I'm spending and targeting ads based on it. But anyway, it's a thing to be aware of. Um, so Microsoft has developed this product called Vaza One, and what it can do is take a single picture of someone, and then it will take that static picture and turn it into a video of that person saying anything you want with realistic mouse motions to match any track you put in. So uh, people say this is, and Microsoft says this is too dangerous to release and they're not releasing it, which seems to me, of course, pretty silly because I'm sure somebody else will develop the same thing and release it pretty soon. So anyway, uh, as we've been hearing for the last several years, there'll be more and more convincing deep fakes of celebrities and politicians and everybody saying things they didn't really say. So, uh, in principle, that really could make a mess of things. If you think about, I'm just thinking about what I know of the world. Everything I know of the world is what I read in the news or what I see in like video clips. And if all that could be faked, you sort of enter this paranoid world where the only thing I actually know are the real people I see in real life and all the rest could be a fantasy. So we'll see where it goes. So I've been hearing a lot of complaint about this in Columbia University. Apparently, there was a pro uh, anti-Israeli protest. Oh, it still falls in the Uncali Valley, Swu says. Well, that's good. Well, then it's just not quite good enough. That's good. Anyway, there, there apparently there's an anti-Israel protest, and it was um, very peaceful. They were not blocking traffic or shutting down any buildings or making too much noise or anything. They just sort of occupied the public space of the college. So the Columbia declared that students are not allowed to hang out on the quad for this one day so they could claim that students were breaking a new college rule they had just invented. Then they sent the New York City police to arrest them. And the New York City police said, these people aren't doing anything wrong. <laughs> and that, then they expelled them all, including Rashida Tlaib's daughter. Uh, so, and, and her major was something like political protest <laughs> or political activism or something. So it seems kind of insane to teach a major or a minor, to teach a program in political activism and then arrest people who are politically activists. But I think um, the analysis I heard in podcast this morning is very correct and explains a lot. Um, the campus administrators are basically controlled by the large money donors. And the large money donors are pro-Israel. 
And so they just want to do whatever the large money donors want. And the students have idealistic principles and want to see that. And that's what causes all this, I think. See the SC scammers targeting Chinese are using such AI fake videos. Oh, in Chinese news here and in China. I did not know that. That's interesting. Yes, but I mean, I've heard more and more uh, scammers using deep fakes of various types. So I mean, that's certainly a place where it'll come. Anyway, uh, so this is pretty interesting. Palo Alto um, endpoint protection software. The researcher found that it has some script files it uses, and those script files can be tricked by using uh, hard links. You can trick it into loading other files without realizing they've been modified. It has an attempt to make sure that the script files it's using have not been modified, but he found a way to bypass that so he could trick it into running arbitrary code, and so he was able to make uh, to trick it into opening reverse shells and everything else. So uh, this has all been patched now, but uh, I've heard this before, where the endpoint protection software itself is used to attack a system. And of course, that's pretty dangerous. Uh, your endpoint protection software is running with high privileges. It does run scans on malware, on unknown files to see if they're malicious. So, uh, you know, it seems like uh, an important point to secure. MITRE is the organization that makes the uh, attack framework, the MITRE grid, that we use a lot in uh, the incident response class. Coming later today in other classes, we use it. This is the way to organize thinking about attack and defense these days. And they're going to add ICS sub-techniques, so uh, industrial control system techniques. So anyway, MITRE continues to be a real leader in this. Uh, and a lot of modern, all attempts to like organize and quantify security measures are generally using the MITRE framework. And the other thing they're using, in fact, is the National Vulnerability Database, which is the source of all those numbers, CVE-2024 a number for every vulnerability. And for more than two months, that thing has not been properly updated. They have updated apparently posting the numbers and the name, but they haven't actually included all important information like mitigations and versions of software affected and such because they're having some kind of a funding crisis inside the agency and they've had some plan to incorporate some other agency and that is not working. So it's been more than two months, so everybody is freaking out because this means for two months your antivirus, your anti-malware, your researchers, everybody haven't been able to refer to this list, which is the heart of everything. So. Uh, it's, people are freaking out. Uh, and it is uh, one of the many examples of how on the internet, something very important rests on a very weak single point of failure, like one package maintained by one random guy in Canada who retires and now suddenly it's not being updated. Or here, we're all trusting some government agency which to do something and we don't actually have any clear promise from that government agency that they keep going and doing, continuing doing it. We don't have a, uh, a terms of service with them or anything, then when they stop doing it, we're all, wait, what? We needed that. <laughs> so we'll see what comes of this. Anyway, that's it for the news.